Hey, this is Peachy. I Moose. This is Sudan. And we'd like to take a moment to thank our original launch site, Anchor.fm, who's helped to enrich this podcast in many ways. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Anchor.fm offers educational tools on how to get started in social media and has not only given our show, Stapled Together, several platforms to choose from for your listening enjoyment, but continues to offer helpful tips and avenues for growth along the way. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. With an easy, hassle-free method for uploading, you can add your podcast episodes to Anchor.fm's extensive library, available for listening on several popular streaming services, letting listeners choose a favorite platform. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what we're doing right now by reading this ad. Go to anchor.fm slash start to get started today. Step Gallup Podcast. Hey, everybody. This is... Take your glasses off, Pat Podcast. I don't have glasses to take off. I was, How about you guys? These are distance and these are reading, so I was looking at comics. <laughs> I was like, what, is there something that you're not looking at me on my glasses? <laughs> you're not looking at me. You're yeah, but... My mind would take your glasses off. <laughs> wow. You could be like that Senate committee dude that went... Like this. Like, yeah, they yeah, are. And, like, pretended to fold them up and put. He liked. Yeah. He's so out of it, man. Oh, that man. was terrible. I mean, that's the best thing I've seen in a long fucking time, but he was all nervous. He's all. <laughs> Nothing. 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 It was. Uh... Oh, that's what good are we stuff. doing today? What are we? What is staple together? Yes, staple together. Okay, staple do you want together. a new? Staple together. Staple together. Do you want a new countdown? Or... You just want to keep all this? I can. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This is the staple together podcast for the comic book release week of. Do you want me to start over? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> the comic book release week of Do You Want Me to Start She's Over? She's already like, ah! <laughs> what is the comic book release day of? The 11th. Oh, March yeah, 11th. For the comic book release week of March 11th, 2020. That's just today. It's not my vision, because apparently we have glasses. Um, I am Sudon. I am Peachy. And I don't have glasses. <laughs> I mean, I'm Moose. Susan with personality today. <laughs> I got that. Uh-huh. Um, well, we got reviews, we've got news, mm-hmm. and we've got this wonderful theme song. News, 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 news. No news is like good news, it's like bad news, it's like news. Oh, yeah, I have that too. <laughs> uh, who's, who's first? Uh, who's first? My news today came from... Uh, comic books Chris Killian on their uh, Daily Distraction from Tuesday, March 10th. And uh, the news on that basically stated that uh, it was confirmed that the Guardians of the Galaxy are going to be featured in Thor Love and Thunder. Uh, when asked what to expect in an interview, Vin Diesel kind of confirmed it um, as well as said, you know, two words to describe my character at this point in time kind of thing was Alpha Group. Alpha I'm like, Group. Yeah, so I'm That's super right. curious about what that means. Alpha Group? Groot. Vin oh. Diesel. Yeah. Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy. Right, I was like, did he come up with something new? But I was like, Alpha Group. Huh. Yeah. yeah. As Guardians of the Galaxy? Hopefully. Yeah, possibly. And, you know, we don't, at this time, we don't 100% know that it's not just the Guardians dropping Thor off somewhere. Yeah, which it and probably is, way. honestly. And we need some more interaction between Star-Lord and Thor. Like, 
I'm we serious. Think, I think what, what they have is perfect. <laughs> I mean, like, are we gonna see um, totally. Uh, totally. The, the 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 belly battle off between <laughs> Star Lord and Thor over there is like no. That uh, <laughs> I think I'm not sure if it was the same article I looked at or if it was on that video they were talking about. You know, them having a weightlifting con or you know. Lift off it's kind of thing. Contest. Yeah, yeah, where Thor like easily gets right. back into shape because he's a god and right. And Quill Star is Lord struggling. gets pudgier. <laughs> you know, kind of. That'd be great. This Chris Pratt. Just, doing yeah, it. going back to Andy from Perks and Rec. Yeah. Oh my god. Although I don't know if that'll work. Although he should be done with Jurassic World at that point. Yeah. So. Well, I don't think that he's going to ever be going back to that because he's like super healthy and like god loving now so how could he not be fit yeah i know but like very specifically in uh, (laughs) oh yeah he's in jurassic park stuff i i i will appreciate him for uh, yeah right (laughs) not his eating habits no because that's great but that that's all I had uh, for today's news. Nice. No speculation on other characters like Nova. No. Master. No, we know that uh Christian Bale's been confirmed as a if not the baddie in in this movie, but I don't know if the role's been confirmed. I've heard things about Mephisto, Adam Strange, uh I can see Adam Strange. Or, not Adam Strange. Yeah, no, that's a Strange Adventures. Adam Warlock. I I was just waiting for you guys to realize. I'm like, yeah, Yeah. Adam Strange? (laughs) No, Adam Adam Warlock over there. Right. Um, But yeah, I don't know. I don't know for sure. And we, you know, there's a few, very few, if any, speculations on what uh, Alpha Groot is. I know that in the comics, as I learned off my source as well, uh, that he was King Groot at one point, and he looked, you know, much larger and had like a beard. Twiggy kind of, beard. Yeah, it was like a twiggy beard. It was crazy looking, but it was He's pretty cool. The prime Groot, or like the main, like we see his home. Huh. Mm-hmm. Groot's got a home. Yeah, hasn't his? I thought his home world was destroyed. I'm not sure. The last of his kind, or something. Right. He might be thinking about DC stuff again. Right. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, that sounds like uh, it's going to be entertaining because Taika. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, right on, man. Yes, sir. What do you got for us there, Ooz? Some startling news. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> percent unplanned <laughs> um, uh, E3 has been cancelled <gasps> oh it has it's wow. officially been cancelled like, wow. okay. like get your tickets back money to stay home coronavirus has apparently spooked up a bunch of people and it makes sense that um, that they won't be able to make it because a lot of the people that would be there are traveling from out of country, Japan, China. Right. Major game developers. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's wild. It's just crazy. Like that's like a big convention. That's yeah. like huge. One of the biggest besides like San Diego in mm-hmm. New York. That this is going to offset some like major announcements. I mean, we were yeah. going to get the info for the new Xbox. New Xbox, right? And hopefully, the trailer five. for Halo Infinite, which right. I know a specific voice actor that is going to be in that game, which is really exciting. Hmm. Is it Matt Murdock? <laughs> no. <laughs> Matt Mercer? No. Nathan Fillion? No. Justin. No. I mean, probably actually, but because yeah, he's already yeah, he's, yeah, he's been in the Halos. That, that, that. That Yost guy. <laughs> None of the Yosts or Jost Jost. are voice actors, so probably not. Oh, D. Bradley Baker? Yes, D. Ah, Bradley Baker. That's ah. right. Known for his work um, in Phineas and Ferb as Perry the Platypus and He's nothing else. And nothing else, else likes ever. to do the day and clone sound. Um, but yeah. So <laughs> there was a weird <laughs> <laughs> like, shut up, Suna. Um, <laughs> what? 
but uh yeah so e3 is canceled that's like a lot of games um pg was saying earlier that um wb games more than likely was yeah. trying to announce a new batman game yeah they uh, have the new batman no, game coming Arkham out game. um it's, it's not, not actually Arkham, connected to uh-oh. the Arkham right, universe. I guess it's been confirmed. Right. But uh, that they had a Harry Potter game. Which is weird. Yeah, that they were announcing and uh, another DC Universe game with the possibility of a fourth game that they were looking to announce. Which well, is crazy. And now, you know, no, no. Well, if, I mean, if we get this news, I'm just curious as to what form that's going to come They'll in. probably just do a giant press release instead of like... And just release the trailers, which sucks, right. because why, there's, why like, not? not as much as the hype. I know there's a lot of hoopla and to do and hop happenstance, especially with these console announcements. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I remember, I, I, I like to watch them, because they, the Xbox really puts on a show. Yeah. But, um, do we need this show? I mean, who's to say they can't give us something else? More content, perhaps. Right. Yeah, okay. and I, I, I really like PlayStation's, you know, yearly press drop whatever their their stuff's pretty good to me yeah i'm a, I'm a playstation guy or more of an xbox guy and they mm. i'm I, on both fronts and I just, dig. especially after last year that i felt like both sony and microsoft were really lacking in their yeah, uh, announcements and they nintendo both, just took over everything yeah yeah didn't playstation not show up last year or something they sony? showed up well they they were there, but they didn't show up. Oh, oh yeah, it's 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 they probably don't have enough to justify it. And like, and as I said, like who's to say they won't? You know, as we're saying, like who's to say they yeah. won't do it in a different format? Right. I wouldn't mind in the comfort I'm gonna do it anyways. Right. Watching this yeah. press conference yeah. and have it boom, we're putting out our product because I still want to know about the product. Yeah. I want to know months ahead so I can plan ahead if I'm going to want to. Yeah. I mean, obviously that's still going to happen, but it's I think it's more of the hype of like people getting to actually demo these games and consoles that is the big draw for E3. Not only that, being uh, the first news sources to get yeah. certain information and you know, being able to pull out that descriptive trailer that we don't have a video for yet or whatever and it's they they get a lot of perks. Yeah. Go you know when you when you go there of course versus you know let's let's sit at home and watch it and watch everything later. But um, I think I think that's going to be another big uh, you know disappointment or maybe detrimental as a, as a result of cancellation that news sources are going to be like well. What are we going to write about? This right. is the big event of the year, and and it's, it's not happening. Yeah, you know, at E3 ebbs and flows so many years. When who goes, what happens? Yeah, what's it happen? So maybe this is just kind of like one of those things that maybe they'll redirect it to PAX. They'll redirect it to another gaming. Right. Maybe. Well, that's just Comic Con. More waiting. And it is more right. waiting, but. Then it also may give some of these different venues an opportunity to see get it uh, right. get that release that they wouldn't get because E three usually takes it right. Did and I mean, know? like, yeah, Blizzard came to DPCC last year, which yeah. I don't play any Blizzard games, but that was like a huge deal for it a was. lot of people. Yeah, Destiny. I don't play Destiny but you anymore. Haven't. Yeah, that doesn't mean I play it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Blizzard game? It is now. I didn't know that. Because they're owned by Activision. <laughs> oh, right. But, I mean, I agree. It was interesting to see. I like... So I like the Classic League Starcraft. You know, I've played, you know, Warcraft. Right. I've played these games. But it was cool to see them at our... Uh, you know, normally we just get, like, local developers or somebody Which is small. also really cool. It yeah. is. But yeah. it's cool to see our, our little humble... Sorry. Um, our small town... Yokel Comic Con is now being noticed by these developers, and I'm like, then I'll get more. It's crazy to me that, I mean, granted the size and, you know, cost increase year after year and stuff like that, and they get names in, you know, depending on what year, whether it's big names or not, but Colorado Springs Con is like get, off the hook. Yeah, they get and so many people. It started years after after Denver Comic Con. Well, or, that like, we know of. I think that they've been going longer than us. I really? don't think so. No, I think it started uh, like the, the third year of Comic Con. Wow. I think, if I'm not mistaken. This is eight? Yeah. Yeah. 
So, and they're just growing and growing and growing. They get all the stars going there, and, yeah. you know, it seems like a big deal. And, I, you know, every year that when they start making their announcements, I'm like, man, Colorado Springs Con, it's yeah. looking pretty good. Yeah, but it's like they, I feel like they spend far. way more money on the guests and not on the everything else, like the merch and stuff, which is one of my big draws to go right. there, which, I mean, it's kind of been lacking the last couple of years. I see a lot of the same stuff yep. at DPCC, yep. um, but it's, the, it's just a smaller venue and there's just less to look at and it's definitely not, I don't, I personally don't think it's worth the three days. Right. They sublet a mall apparently now. Oh. Yeah. It, from, from what I understand. I may be wrong. I may be talking down on my butt, but... <laughs> from I think it's it's pretty big and like major now. Like we we went, I think it was the second year mm -hmm. that they had it. Maybe maybe the second or first or second year, and it was pretty lackluster. Yeah. And it was cool though. We met Jay. Yeah, uh, he was super chill. Yeah, he for was sure. playing Pokemon Go. Yeah, uh, Jay Jay and Silent Bob thing. Yeah. Yeah, um, Jay Muse. Jay Muse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, and who's to say? I mean, it's probably going to get canceled as well because of the. Uh, this. I hope mm -hmm. not, because I mean, I feel like there's not that many people like traveling in from other countries, even though we do have international airport right here. But I, I hope not. I mean, <laughs> speaking of Pokemon Go, I mean, they did also start canceling the Pokemon Go summer events, the the Go Fest and stuff. Right. Like that. That's Classically, and they're already going like, nope, these aren't happening. Even events in in game, they're like, we're we're not going to do this. Stay inside, stay away. Kind of like, so like, who's to say what's going to happen? It, it sucks. It does. I mean, we'll it's see. we'll see what happens. Safety first and <laughs> everything for sure. Wash but, your hands. I mean, you, you, it's Let's times face. like this where where people like us fall back on entertainment and our sources like that. That yeah. you know, and when it starts. Affecting things that we're looking forward to and stuff. It's just kind of a bummer. Stay away from old people if you've got it. Yeah. Stay away from young and people children. if you've got it. Don't children. wear a mask. It makes it worse. Apparently, yeah. Oh. From what I've heard. Sweet. Yeah, I don't want to wear a mask anyway. <laughs> but that's a, it just goes with the time. Yeah. 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 But yeah. right on. Anything else? No. What did you have for the new um, thing? Tom King... Yes. Not Tom Taylor. Oh. <laughs> no, Tom Taylor. <laughs> Tom Taylor. Because <laughs> <laughs> of the ongoing joke there is because nobody can remember which one is which, but it's Tom Taylor, the writer of Deceased, creator of Deceased, uh, DC's little zombie event, uh, tweeted yesterday. Or was yesterday. The, yeah, it was, no, it was the day before yesterday. At some point this <laughs> week. <laughs> <laughs> of reporting, right in the <laughs> in the comic book week of Fe of March eleventh, da 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 da. Um, Tom Taylor po posted up a new picture saying, um, "Deceased two, right? Coming. Dead Planet is that what Dead it was? Planet, yes. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's I'm, I'm excited to see that because Deceased has been really fun to read. It's been an interesting and fun. emotional ride. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, we're in the middle of Undesirables or Unkillables. Unkillables, yeah. Um, number two comes out next, next week. week. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to reading that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I still think it's great that he's on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we'll see. see. I'm curious who is on the cover because that's not necessarily... It looks like Artemis and a few uh... others. <laughs> I'm happy that finally that... Uh... Marvel Zombies Resurrection number two is finally going to be out. It's been number one's been out for months. Mm -mm. Wonder like Girl you said they're all coming out like week after week after week now. Wonder Girl, Constantine, Swamp Thing, a Superman and a Batman, which we know that that is not a thing because, or at least in John and Damien, that makes oh so it's going to be in the future. That's John Snow's. Cause remember, I know, but they're but they're but Batman's like Batman sized, uh, not not like Robin sized. All Dick, no. oh. <laughs> and even when Dick was uh, Batman, you could tell. Yeah, was, I mean, he's definitely sleeker, slimmer. 
I just I know the John oh, yeah. from the super from the super suit that he has huh. on. It's John's right. he got from his uncle. He's he's pretty father, bulky. Her grandfather. Yeah, I mean that can definitely be them, but it would have to be in the future. Yeah, because they were both still kids at the end of that series. I didn't. I still haven't read the last one, so I might be wrong. I never remember. But I they don't were, remember if John got aged at that point. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. Wild and looks like show. it's going to be an interesting story still. Yeah, I'm like, curious what they're going to pull with it. But, awesome. Yeah, that's it for the news. Unless anybody's got any other no, morsels no. of news business. Not that, Not that I can think of. Cool. Now on to the reviews. Yeah. Yeah. PG. Yes, sir. I had uh, I had picked up several books today. One of which I was looking forward to read was Cable. Yes. Uh, oh, Cable yeah. one, and unfortunately, it wouldn't digitize for me, and I I was in a constant uh, state of eating while I was reading, and could only read my digitals, uh, so I didn't get to read Cable. But I did read Amazing Spider-Man number forty-one that I shared with Sudan. That one earned a seven for me. Um, there were two separate stories in the book, True Companions Part 1, written by Nick Spencer, featuring inner art and the cover on the book by was by Ryan Otley. Yes. Um, and then The Sins of the Lethal Legion was also written by Nick Spencer, but it was featuring art by Francesco Mobili and colors by Eric Arsen- Arseniega? Arseniega Hall. Arsenio Hall. Um, it got a seven. It was. It wasn't bad. It was pretty good. Um, I I like Spidey teaming up with Boomerang. I like they they have a pretty good. You know they banter back and forth. It's not quite Spider Man Deadpool, but this guy's just he's got an inflated ego and but he's got a good uh, an awesome sense of good and good. you know so it it was a fun story. They were it was kind of. Uh, scavenger hunt kind of deal going on and it was it was a lot of fun it was an interesting story yeah it was uh and left out left off on a cliffhanger on that one um of course uh which i don't remember what it was uh i also had new mutants number nine that one got a six from me that was written by ed brisson featuring art by flaviano and a cover by mike del mundo uh, New Mutants had a pretty unique cover no, cover A, um, that one by Mike Del Mundo. Uh, crazy looking, just stretched faces. And it reminds me of Bill Sk- Skinowitz, is that how you say his name? I think so. Um, his art for a lot of Legion stuff, yeah. because he created Legion, but that that's just what it reminds me of in general. Right. Um, it was cool. It was a good cover, uh. The book had a lot, or the cover had a lot to do with the story. It was, you know, they were going after a new mutant that was in trouble in an area of Russia that uh, uh, didn't allow mutants and didn't recognize uh, Krakoa, the, the mutant nation, as a sovereign nation and whatever. So she was in danger and she had just found out about her powers. And then they go to try to help her and they get sucked into this world. This oh. world, cr- crazy world, and I don't know. It looks like one of them died. You know, oh. it's, it's just, just crazy. It was, I don't know. Trippy. Some weird stuff was going on. It, it was super trippy. It was a fun book. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it was a good one. I also had Darth Vader, which I had to read number one and number two for. Darth Vader number two. Wait. Darth Vader number two got a seven for me. Um, or Darth Vader number one, excuse me, got a seven for me. Darth Vader number two, however, fell to a 5.5. 5. Uh, it was written by Greg Pack, featuring art by Raphael Lenko. And cover A was by in Hyuk Lee. Yeah. I also read X-Men number eight. That one got a 7.5. It uh, was written by Jonathan Hickman. And... Featured art by Mahmoud A. Azrar and cover by Lionel Francis Yu. 
X Men is still doing really well. They, they, uh, X Men Marauders, um, X Force, I think, are ones that that continue to earn at least above a six point five or a seven nice. for me. So this, uh, although yeah, I'm, that seems about what you keep giving them, right? It, it, it didn't for this particular book. I unfortunately can't <laughs> can't remember what happened in it. I know a lot of stuff happened. Uh, oh no, they were they were. Uh, they had an incoming attack of the brood. The brood attacked the uh, Krakoa, um, which is like their uh, voracious uh, species of aliens that just feed and feed and feed and feed and. Meek. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no. Um, That's what Meek is. Is he? Uh, uh, what's his, what, uh, not Meek? What's his name from um, Thor Ragnarok? What's yeah. his uh, Cork's friend? Me. Yeah, he's a, he's part of the brood. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> he got scissor hands. <laughs> I think he's. If I'm correct, if I think so, unless he's that other species, because there is that species I've seen them with before. There's there was a guy. The Hulk. Huh. Because they were in that planet Hulk. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Uh, there was some guy that was part of their species, and he recognized the reason why they were there, and there was like an egg that they were after, or so they were coming to the planet. And, they were just, you know, trying to figure out a plan from there. But it was, the art was really, it was really well done. Uh, not to mention Darth Vader's art was, the, the Star Wars books, I don't know if they cheat or not. I've heard rumors, I've heard things, but they it's always pretty damn good art in those books. But uh, good story, good art in X-Men number eight. But my pick of the week was Ghost Rider number six. Uh, that got an 8.5. Oh. Yeah. We, was, have, we haven't heard any Ghost Rider since you started picking it up. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think I might have talked about maybe like the first one. I'm not, yeah. I'm not 100%. You may have like ghosted by it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, but I'm not 100%. I, I, I may be wrong, but Ghost Rider number six was written by Ed Bresson, featuring art by Juan Frigeri and a cover by Aaron Cooter. Uh... Ghost Rider number six was was pretty cool. Um, it was bouncing back and forth between uh, Johnny Blaze and Danny Ketch. And what you the, did talk about it, I remember now. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, and, and what they were going through and what they were doing. Danny Ketch had uh, become the spirit of a. Uh... Ah, man, now I can't even remember. He had become something else. It was more of a knight that used a sword mm-hmm. instead of a ghost rider. But he was the spirit of something or other. Knight's Templar. And he wanted, well, He has this big ass sword that like just wants to feed on bad people or badness, evilness, and whatever. And he can't stop it, and it actually winds up stabbing Punisher, a uh, running Punisher through with it, um, which. He turns out to be okay. He, it, he's it, Punisher. Yeah, it was like his insides and soul and everything was just darkened and blackened and everything. And he's like, I feel fucking horrible and inside of me. And I don't know if I'll ever get this taste out of my mouth. And blah blah blah. Did mm. it? Uh, whatever. But um, the blade didn't kill him because it, it decided that he wasn't. Um, he wasn't Guilty? a bad guy. Yeah, he's he was doing bad things. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, kind of thing. Um, and Wolverine had to stop him and kind of talk him down. There's so catch. many people. That yeah, are they in this book. they all showed up because uh, Danny had killed a demon that was wearing a police officer. Oh. Yeah, and they're like, wearing "You killed a police, police officer." Yeah. Yeah. He's like a flashback demon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've seen stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but people. Uh, he was wearing, yeah, he was wearing a police officer, and so they're like, uh-uh, and Frank's like, no, I'm taking him down, because he killed a cop. Right. Whatever, and Wolverine shows up, and he's like, you know, something's not right here, we need, you know, all this stuff, whatever. Bub. <laughs> Bub. <laughs> and, uh... Bub. 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 Yeah, I, I, 
I'm having trouble remembering exactly everything that happened, but it, it was really good. Um, had but a, I'm sure all of your favorite characters in it. Yeah, <laughs> I had a lot of my favorite characters in it for sure. Um, uh, Johnny Blaze was dealing with Doctor Strange, who had trapped him inside the Sanctum Sanctorum, right. um, and he was trying to find a way out. Johnny had a Mephisto prisoner. He had taken Mephisto with him to try to uh, do something. And the more demons he was burning and sending back to hell, the more he absorbed the, yeah, flame up or absorbed the power of the devil to where he's starting to become the devil oh. because he's in charge of hell right now. Right, yeah. He's like the king of hell. Um so they're like, we got, we have to stop him. He's gonna, you know, turn into the devil, and it's not only, you know, causing problems around Earth. It's gonna cause him problems, and and apparently, what what I didn't know, and I don't know exactly when this happened, but Doctor Strange had talked Johnny Blaze into going down to hell and claiming the throne and holding it, um, you know, because it needed to probably it, War of Realms. Probably War of Realms. He's like, hey, hold the throne. You know, we can't have the hell running loose and whatever and this and that. Literally. So while there was a gap, that's how some of the demons escaped from hell and everything, whatever. But uh, he basically forgot about Johnny Blaze and left him there. And he's trying to explain to him, I didn't forget about you. It's not easy to do. I can't just pull you back. Then there's nobody there and blah, blah, blah. And Mephisto's all... Don't listen to him. He's lying. He forgot about you. Blah, blah, blah. And so it gets them arguing amongst themselves and uh, runs off. Uh, and Mephisto runs of off while they're, while they're not looking and shit and whatever. And uh, eventually they make their way out of the Sanctum Santorum and whatever. And it ended on another cliffhanger, which I can't exactly remember at this point. But it was really good. I was like, you know, I closed that book and I'm like, or not close the book, but. Yeah. Exited out, and I'm like, damn. It really felt like old Ghost Rider. I'm a big fan of the character, and I've collected several series, series, Sirai of his, and it really felt like the the character that I'm familiar with and enjoy. So, nice. it, you know, on both ends, the whole book, whatever. Um, so it was really good. You definitely like the gratuitous um, cameo. Thy favorite character. Yeah. Yeah, Punisher and Wolverine for sure. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Good stuff. But no, Fun. yeah, I, I really enjoyed that book. It was really good. And I'm glad I got to talk about it again. It was one that I had, uh, I wasn't so sure that I did want to keep collecting. Um, my nephew, your cousin. <laughs> yeah. Well, he kept asking, should I pick it up? Should I pick yeah. it up? And I'm like, it. It's pretty good. It's pretty good so far, but it, it's definitely it held my interest for the first one, and it's definitely picking up and feeling like a Ghost Rider book now. So, I definitely recommend it to anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh, cool. Thank you, PG. For oh, show. What do you have for us, Suze? Two books this week. So many books. So many had, books. Um, they ba- Did you notice that they bagged and boarded the? Bags and boards wrong. They the boards were it backwards. Did you pick up any that were pre boarded? No. Nick. The two that I picked up were table books, so they were bagged and boarded wrong. Um, oh. I had flash number seven fifty one. Continued writing by Joshua Williamson and art by Chris Kristen Deuce and also Luis Guerrero. Colors by Hi Fi and. Oh, wait, no. Colors were Louis Guerrero and Hi-Fi. It was really confusing. <laughs> I got the Howard Porter Hi-Fi cover. It's a really good cover. It is a really good cover. Howard Porter is really good at the, the flash art. He does uh, <laughs> flash he, art. He draws speed. He does yeah. draw speed really well. I like that you can... He uses a lot of detail, but you can see... You can definitely tell what's going on in yes. the picture. It's not overly... Like, um, saturated with stuff. Yeah. So that book happened. And then I also had Star Wars Bounty Hunters, number one. Um, which I shared with Sudan? Mm-hmm. Yes. Nice. 
Right. I don't know who the writers and artists were for this at all. Um, writer was Ethan Sachs. Artist was Paolo Villane. Villi Villa Nelly. Villa Nelly. Ah, this is not just me messing it up. Um, <laughs> colorist is RF Prarantino. Pronto. And I got the variant cover um, by Carrie Andrews. I do. I like that cover. It's super cool. Yes, it is a good cover. My pick of the week was Flash number 751. Because I <laughs> didn't understand what was going on in Bounty Hunters. A character shows up in it from a different series that I know very little about. Hondo? No. Oh, okay. No, I know more about Hondo than I know about this character. Okay. Different like Hondo, comic book series. Like, hey, yeah, I feel Hondo. like hey, it's Hondo. <laughs> I figured he'd be dead by now. Should be. No, I'm just kidding. He might not be. I don't know. I don't know what happens after Rebels. Me either. That was. I, no, I'll ask you guys later. It's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Flash number seven fifty one picks up right after sev- Flash um, number seven fifty, obviously. Um, but the main uh, story that was um, continued from whatever it was, 78, I don't remember, the whatever books over there. Right. <laughs> um, and uh, Paradox is a bad guy, and Iris is the guy in the chair right now for Barry, and he's like, go home, you're in danger, and she's like, no, you need to run, because... Commander Cold from the future, who Captain Cold killed in huh. in um, the Year of the Villain stuff, huh. froze him and killed him. Um, he left a message for you to tell you about Paradox, who's the bad guy, and how the only person to stop him was Reverse Flash, Eobard Thawne. So you can't stop him because Eobard's still faster than you. Right. <laughs> so you, and he had a team helping him. So that's uh, just not going to happen. Lord. And I'm like, oh God, Barry, you're going to die. And um, then he, Paradox sent Godspeed on um, Flash, and then uh, Paradox does the the villain monologue and explains why he's doing all these things right. and he's like oh so you're in it for revenge uh, yeah totally on your side Barry I was a, a double agent the entire time let's kill this guy or get this guy because he was a cop before and he's like I thought you were a bad guy again I don't know what's going on huh. and then Paradox is like oh you're gonna betray me I'm gonna murder you so he bashes him in he doesn't actually murder him because he needs him for something who knows what's going on and kills barry and barry's dead Yay. again wow again wow yeah nice. i'm gonna show you the picture that he dies cool could that be that he created a paradox <laughs> probably well because yeah. then he wouldn't get because then he wouldn't get captured by Eubard because he probably wouldn't be as obsessed with the Flash because the Flash stop, stopped living, but the fla- reverse Flash already exists, so time travel doesn't make sense. I had a paradox, but that was back in high school. They're expensive. They are. Yeah. Oh, he nice. He says, you should have stayed dead. Damn. He's talking about Flashpoint. Who's this again? Um, Paradox. No, the uh, artist. Inside art? I don't know. That's really good. I like it. He went all dusty. Yeah. Um, Cosmic explosion. Christian Deuce. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, I the like art's really good. I'm I'm a fan. Um, it's like almost seamless between his and Howard Porter's art because he was doing the before 750 art and now this guy's doing this art so it's, it, that's really good but Barry's dead again <laughs> yeah. wow that's yeah. crazy because Paradox's family was or he was killed because of no his Paradox's family was killed because of Flashpoint happening or something huh 
time travel is really confusing. For sure. But yeah, so it, that's it's really crazy. Weird how they did, when they did everything that they did, because you know there are there was two Supermans, right? And, and like the New Fifty Two, like how that ended up merging into whatever this is and whatever existed is totally weird. Mm-hmm. And I still have no idea. Mm-mm. Yeah, what's left and what this universe is with this this universe. You need to read Flash Seven Fifty <laughs> and Flash Board. Murder Board. Oh, <laughs> DC Board. Um, no, that's like not very lightly touched on, but that's what I'm pretty sure Generation Zero and One is going to be part of is figuring out why things are different, but also the same, but also different. Right. Yeah. Starting with Wonder Woman. I guess. She was the first hero. I, yeah. Anyways, that's, yeah, that was The Flash. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome, Star yeah. Wars was really, your Bounty Hunters was really confusing for me. Hmm. Bosk was there. He was. <laughs> and Boba Fett. <laughs> and, uh... Boba and, Fett. Boba Fett. A, Boba Fett. A third character... That was in the ship. (laughs) Yep. Okay. Sudan, what books did you have? (laughs) I too had books. Hmm. This week I had Spider Man 41 with the. or with him. Peachy. Yes, sir. Luke Spencer, Ryan Otley, Nathan Fairbairn, and Ryan Otley. Yep. Uh, That one got a 7.5 out of 10 on it. Hmm. Um, I like the banter. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, love Ryan Otley's art. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's good stuff. It, it's it's growing on me pretty hardcore. Um, especially when the goofy stuff's happening. Yeah. Um, tired of vermin. Glad we're finally getting answers that they've been alluding to for a year. Yeah. We're finally finding out what Fisk is looking for. We're finally looking at all the stupidity, but we still don't know. Yeah, she had no no uh, salamander guy. Yeah, no centipede. Yeah, centipede guy. Nothing um, about that yet. I also too had uh, Star Wars Bounty Hunters number one. Uh, Ethan Sachs writing uh, Paolo Vinelli. Yeah. Uh, is the artist. Arif Pranto is the colorist, and I got the Lee Barmeo cover. It's the main cover. Which is featuring. That was uh, a good cover, also. Boba Fett, Valence, and Box. If from a distance, it it looks really old school, like old school Star Wars comic. Uh, you get closer; it's definitely more modern uh, art, yeah. whatever art style, whatever. It's cool. Uh, Boss is <laughs> a lizard. Boss got beat up. Uh, oh dang! Dude got his face blown off. Was it Cad Bane? No, okay. I wish Cad Bane was in this. Oh, okay. He did. Um, I don't know. I never got any explanation after his last appearance in Clone Wars. None of us have seen him since. Huh. Then you don't know he's dead. Don't say that. No, he did. Him and his fabulous hat cannot <laughs> die. Right? His space pimp that he is. <laughs> uh, that one, I, I, gave it, I gave it an 8 <laughs> out of 10. Oh, nice. Um, oh, yeah, and, uh, and of Icicle Han Solo. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's who the third character was. <laughs> it's... Oh, can we say, or do you want to say who the other character is that I don't know anything about? Dr. Afra. Yeah, Dr. Oh, Dr. Afra. Afra. Was there. Okay. Her, her Wookiee friend. And, uh, oh, the black Wookiee. Yeah. Um, interesting story, interesting setup. Cool to see. I hate that they straight up were like, yeah, Boba Fett and your Baskar steal um, stuff. I'm like, he didn't wear Baskars. No. It was pretty dinged up. He's such a second-rate Mandalorian. Um, but yeah, interesting book, cool cover. I think um, that if it was a longer series that I would have been less confused because I feel like it was just really mashed together because the first part of it was the reason that things are happening and then the second part of it is oh these things are happening huh. <laughs> i'm like what oh, the, okay <laughs> that disconnected kind of happened but then i was like oh and then it was also like i don't know half the characters and don't care yeah i don't think we're supposed to but it's one of those like we'll get there yeah right um 
I also had a Star Wars Darth Vader number two. Yo. Um, uh, written writing by Greg Pak, Raffaele and Kinko, or whatever. Uh, Naraj, Ninon, and Anyhuck Lee is the cover I got. Yeah, same. Um, I got this one scored a nine out of ten. Oh wow! On this one, um, just because of. Some... Varying vast difference, huh? Yeah. I, I really dug the the the, the, the anger that you, Vader's putting out, the having to face the face of your lost loved one, which is still the one you killed, mm-hmm. right. responsible for dying. You know, and then the mystery. I can just imagine that anger that he's going through in a sort of way. But I, I figured it was one of. The handmaidens. You know, yeah, it, it went downhill from awesome. there for me. I'm like, I want an explanation that, like, a vision or something or something, you know. I wanted something deeper and I but, don't know. I like the robots. It feels very droid. Yeah, very he's, droid. I like the robot. There's always one of those. I, I, I'm very intrigued um, at this one. I can't Are wait you? to see what I'm, I'm going to continue reading it for sure. Oh, um, I think it. I'm curious what because that's got to be hard, and I can't wait to see how he kills her. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or, um, I also had uh, Go Go Power Rangers number 30. Uh, continue writing by Ryan Perot, Parrot, and Cena Grace. Uh, Francisco Moria, um, Mortarino is the color or right, artist. One of those people's. Uh, colorist is Raul Angulo. And Eleonora Carlini did the cover. Nice. It's blue, very blue. Um, this one got a 9.5 out of 10. It Sweet. is definitely my pick of the week. Uh, essentially, they're seeing the story of not quite Omega Rangers yet, but um, oh, the what becomes Omega Rangers Tom, are Jason, Trini, and Zach going to on their first mission of their secret missions to find Wu Kari 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 it's kind of weird it's a the name is but to find her and save her but in the process also find out what they're going to do and the rangers on the earth that are left behind are all suspicious of why they can't get a hold of these people and the monster attacks and it's there's some really cool stuff that's occurring and a lot of setup that's happening um, to connect to what's going to happen in Mighty Morphin. So I'm really excited to see it. It's super cool to see it. So this one definitely great art, great writing. Yeah, cool to have. You know, there's some moments where I giggled and was like, oh, I remember that. Yeah, it's got to be great art and writing, man. It's a consistent winner for you. <laughs> it's just they they don't they they know what they're doing. And yeah, and they keep you. They they they've, they've got something coming that's going to be a major payoff, which is nice. That's cool. This is the Rangers I always wanted. Nice, that's awesome. So hey, that's they, it. they can afford to be a little grittier and stuff on in in comics than they can on the kids shows. So that's that's always awesome for sure. And it's 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 they they don't go too overly aggressive, but they kind of put you into a position that what would how would it be in this modern age without. You know, keep it to a kid standard. Right, right. But well, that's nice. it for me. That was that was my pick of the week. Nice. Sweet, awesome. Yeah, that's all it for the reviews of the week. Yeah, yes, sure. What comics? What comics do we have next week, there, Peachy? Um, I'm thinking next week, three eighteen. I mean, I might pick up that Robin 80th anniversary. Yeah. Uh, I'm really digging on that. Uh. Jim Lee cover mm-hmm. for sure. Deadpool. You should call the store and tell them to put it on there on the hold slot times two. Okay. So we, I we can, can get it. Tomorrow. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, for sure. Uh, De- Deadpool number four, Excalibur number nine, Star Wars number four, and X Force number nine. Star Wars number four? Already? Yeah, I believe so. Wait, no, it's number three. Oh, wait, no, I'm thinking Darth Vader. That's why. Yeah, yeah. There was so much happening this week. Yeah, for sure. I I am looking forward. I I'm enjoying the Star Wars. I the first three, you know, I'm like I dug on. But yeah. Is this the one that Luke's gonna have the yellow lightsaber, or is it number six? I'm not sure. 
I think it might be this one. Number actually. six. Number oh, six. is it? Okay. Oh. Um, <laughs> I, I think my pick might be X-Force. Yeah, probably. So. Um, the comics that I have next week are Deceased, Unkillables, number two. And Justice League, number 43. And Nightwing, number 70. Um, I'm going to assume my pick of the week is going to be Unkillables, number two, because it's following Jason Todd, All and right. I hate him. <laughs> so. And Nightwing's just really complicated right now. Oh, really? It, yeah, Court right, of Owls cover, stuff. I, I'm sure it's great. I don't look at covers before they come out. That cover, though. I'm sure it's great. Has how me is, wanting to get the book. How is old Rick over there? We don't know if he's going by Rick or Richard or Dick right now, so we're going to go with Mr. Grayson. <laughs> okay. <Apparently. laughs> me, personally, in my brain. That's that's what we're going to go with. Um, I'm thinking this is going to be the last Justice League that I'm going to get, though. Oh, really? Yeah. It's just falling off for oh, you. I don't like the story. I miss Jaro. Batman's not as funny. <laughs> no one's as funny. Uh, not even Barry, which is really hard to make Barry Allen uh, not funny. It's fortunate when they do that. They you know launch a book with super successful <coughs> writers and artists, and then you know after a while, it's it, they have to change it and then go go to a different formula. Do they? They have to. Well, yeah, because usually they have to pull the popular. We need you to launch this book now. We need you to you know. What's there Scott Snyder doing right now? Huh? Death metal. He's doing death metal. Death metal. No. Because he's not working with Capullo anymore. Scott Snyder is doing death metal. Oh, then why are they liars? They're liars. They were doing something else, but they They did that death metal. They said that the last thing that they were going to be doing together was Last Night on Earth. They're liars. Maybe they finished this a long time ago, and they wrote Last Night on Earth recently. I don't know! I don't know the answers you seek! (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, what books do you have, Sudan? Well, since I took the pictures on my old phone, and it's upstairs, um, I know I'm going to definitely be picking up that Brave and the Bold facsimile, because of Jaro. Um, Oh yeah, I'm going to be getting all the dollar comics, and, oh, it's that cover? Yeah, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that facsimile right there. Oh yeah, yep. It's a classic. um, You said Brave and the Bold. It says Brave and the Bull, number 28, because it's a Brave and the Bull Justice League. Oh, wild. Uh, yeah. Um, Deceased Unkillables, number two. That one is going to be available. Um, probably get an update on Ghost Spider, because I'm almost done catching up on that. I'd like to give an update on He-Man and the Masters of the Multiverse, because number yeah, five cause comes out on doesn't that. Doesn't he like, get corrupted and he's evil now? Something yeah. of the source. I haven't read any of them. I just saw a cover. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's a multiverse. There is an evil version of him, not Faker, no, but an evil right. version. Oh, um, oh, Faker's is, is it uh, anti eternity He man by any chance? It's quite Black? possible. He, he has like inky stuff. It was very symbiotic. <laughs> hmm. Symbiotic. Um, I also have Justice League. Awesome. Uh, number forty-three with ooze, Middle West gonna be picking that up because that one's been building up to something big and i think yeah. it's honestly building up to being over but i don't know yeah, I'm uh, not sure. sorry yeah no I feel I'm, like I'm, I'm, I'm not sure i haven't seen any oh uh, uh, i feel like i keep cutting you off <laughs> no I've, but i definitely know that the pick of the week is probably not gonna be robin I might be picking up the same jim lee cover Mm. I, well, I, I don't think I'm going to get the Jim Lee cover. I don't know what cover I'm going to get. We'll see. Mm. Um, but I have to get that uh, Star Wars next week. But if I'm looking, 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 scrolling, Searching. scrolling. Searching. Uh, Searching. It's an easy go you know, to pick what my week is, next week is going to be. <laughs> Mighty Morphin Power Ranger? Those were all words. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Power Rangers. Yeah. Number three... Two? Four? It's not two. Oh, three. It's right there in front of me. This is... It does not say in front of me either. Gosh, start number four. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's like that. Number four. Sweet. You guys pick these books up, yo. Go support your or local don't. businesses, local comic book shops. 
Or don't. You need your help sometimes. Or don't. Or don't. Or, yeah, just buy them on digital and read them on, in the safety of your own computer. Uh, um, you can still get computer viruses. Remember Go that. Wash your hands. Don't touch yeah. your face. If you don't know where your local comic book store is, visit comicbookstorelocator.com for your comic book finding store, comics book store finding needs. <laughs> also, check us out on all the social medias, <laughs> except for Facebook. Don't, don't ever go to Facebook. I mean, if you want to go to Facebook, I, I'm putting the uh, weekly haul videos up there when we do them. Uh, you can go check that out. I'm going to try to make an effort to get on there consciously and maybe put, you know, whatever news I can find throughout the week up there. You know, hopefully try to get some interest maybe built back up there. I don't know. Best spots are Twitter, Instagram. Yeah. Instagram. yeah. Definitely check them all out. Yep, yeah. yep. Check out uh, Suit On Segment on YouTube. Um, and you can check out some of my toy photography on Instagram at peachkeen 76 yeah, check that out. Yeah. For sure. Uh, this is the part where we go, Dormammu, I've come to bargain. I don't no, think wait. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it wasn't, actually. What kind of quote do you have for us? I have a motivational quote for you. Oh, awesome. Do you want me to say it? Or yeah, you, to, yeah. <laughs> you just asked me what kind of quote I had. We don't fake it until we make it. We believe it until we become it. Nice. Awesome. I like that. Yeah. We don't die, we multiply. One yeah. quote. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that was a quote from the famous Bay Bay's Kids movie from the 90s. You have a quote from us? That was the famous quote from the baby squids from the 90s. This is so cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Dormammu, right. I have Dormammu, come to bargain. You come to bargain. Dormammu, check out these bargains. <laughs> Dude, prices right music <laughs> for <laughs> Like, We're closing this? down and have to this? get rid of all this What have you done to me? <laughs> <laughs> Who's Drew Carey? <laughs> Why is this giant wheel here? <laughs> Plinko? Why do you have this? No! Not Plinko! <laughs> Damn it, I knew the price of that car was an 80. Shut up, I... Dr. Strange! <laughs> We will have you listening the next time. Thanks for listening the next time. <laughs> and this time, too. Bye. Yeah. Catch you guys later. Bye. I was... I'll have you listening, Ben. <sighs> Darmamu! Hey, thanks for listening to our podcast. If you enjoyed this, connect with us on social media, and of course like and subscribe so you don't miss out. Music is brought to you by Kevin McLeod. Find more of his music by visiting inkandpetch.com or clicking on the link in the description. If you want to listen to more, find us on anchor.fm or website on staplestogetherpod.wixsite.com and pretty much anywhere you can find podcasts.